If there's one thing the British share in common, it's their love for dogs. Take, for example, professional dog walker Sally Russell. Two of Sally's dogs are her own, Taz, a Roddy Lab mix, and Herbie, a mixed breed rescue dog. Me and my husband, Dan, wanted to rescue a dog. Um, we didn't want to, to buy one. As I was a dog walker, he needed to get on with all the other dogs and just be a, a laid back dog. We found Herbie and he had something about him. He was really sort of cocky, you know, and he was called Herbert because in England, if someone's a bit of a cheeky boy, they're called a, a right Herbert. Good boy. I wanted a dog that was a bit of a challenge, but he has been much more of a challenge than I realised. <laughs> When we got him home, there was a honeymoon period of about two to three days. And then he began snapping at us. And about a week after I had him, he began barking and circling children in the park. If he saw something that made him afraid, he would attack it rather than run away. So I muzzled him. We just both ended up in tears. You know, what was wrong with this dog? He was so affectionate to us, but with strangers, he was like a wild animal. <laughs> Me and Dan worked so hard with socialising him, and he is now perfect um, with children. He is so sweet and gentle with Dan's grandson, Joe. <laughs> The only people he doesn't like now are men in uniform, but Herbie has become very dog aggressive. He's also very aggressive with other animals. Horses is his worst. But just over a year ago, Herbie's compassionate side came out in a remarkable way as Dan lay dying of cancer. Me and Sophie, his daughter, were able to bring him home from the hospital so that he could die at home with us. And suddenly we realised that Herbie had jumped onto Dan's bed and he just laid on top of Dan for a long time, for, you know, maybe half an hour or something. And when he was on top of him, he kind of... They started breathing... Their breathing went together, you know, and, and it was... I don't know, it was... It just meant something, you know. Now Sally is training for a marathon. She's lined up sponsors to raise money for charity in Dan's memory, and she won't be running alone. I'm going to run a marathon with three dogs. Herbie's got loads of energy. You know, he'll run for any distance. But with a race set to happen in less than a month, Sally must urgently get a handle on Herbie. We run through all the London parks, which have horses in them and deer running free. And I would love to be running with Herbie with him not lunging at horses and deer and other dogs. You mentioned that Herbie was Dan's dog. What do yeah. you mean by that? Well, I mean, Herbie appeared to be more, much more bonded with Dan. Is that when Dan had uh, cancer? I think, yeah, Herbie became more... I mean, Dan had cancer for so seven years. So he was a years. therapy dog? Yeah. You know what cancer is, right? Yeah. It's a dead cell. Yeah. So it has a very punchy smell. Yeah, I know they smell. But you can't smell it. Yeah, but Sometimes. I know dogs can, yes. yeah, yeah. So that's what he was feeding. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, recently, you know, somebody who is in that kind of pain, the energy level goes yeah. softer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they feel that he needed them the most. Oh, wow, yeah. Right? Yeah. That is called therapy dog. Mm. Yeah, the dogs are looking for a job. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when they destroy your house, that's a job. Yeah. Yeah. That's called stream home makeover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Herbie never done that. But um, he has to always be muzzled in right. public and be on the lead. He circles around, he snarls, growls, barks. How does that make you feel? 
I feel sort of humiliated, I think. So if the person becomes embarrassed of the yeah. behavior, this behavior becomes stronger. Yeah. You open your emotion door and anger yeah. kicks in. Yeah, it's so true because I, you know, I've watched your program, you know, since it started. Mm -hmm. And um and I use your techniques with the dogs I look after and they work so perfectly. Mm -hmm. Except with with Herbie. Because you make Herbie personal. Well, it is personal. Mm. <laughs> it is and it's not. Because yeah. if you make it personal and then you make it about you, that's why yeah. it's not good. And that says that we need to work on something personal. So the, the, Herbie is an example of me having the dog I need and not the dog I want, isn't it? Yeah. God is good. Yeah, yeah. Caesar decides to begin his observation in Sally's backyard, where Herbie is usually at his best. Very nice. Very receptive, too. Most of the people focus on the aggression. I focus on that good side of him, that healthy, joyful state. I want to make sure that he knows that I know that he's a good boy. This is the foundation. So when you see something that is beautiful, you keep it that way. Yeah, yeah. Now, if, it, if that beautiful creation start going in a certain direction, you bring him right back. Now it's time to see Herbie at his worst. Sally and Caesar drive to Wimbledon Common a large open area that is a haven for horses and dogs alike, at least until Herbie comes calling. Ready, ma'am? <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, you got a muscle on. There you go. Yeah. Let me show you one thing. His eye contact has changed. His, his demeanor has changed because this place represents to him not a relaxed place. So that's the first thing we have to acknowledge. The eye contact that he's doing is pretty tense. Pretty, pretty tense. This guy is so expressive through his eyes. We haven't seen a case like this before. We're just gonna wait until he settles down, then we're gonna invite him up. And he did. I mean, we waited no more than 10 minutes, and then he went and laid down, because nobody was paying attention to that state. That's right. The touch. Just to snap him out of it. Yeah. So we're gonna remove the fear that, you know, looking bad, or the fear of what people can say. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, feeling embarrassed. That, that, that can be related to fear. So we're just going to stay with the love part of it. Okay. Right? With the warm part of England. <laughs> That's yeah. what my experience in England. It's cold, the weather, yeah. but people are warm. Yeah, they are. He relaxed, we got it out, and we, we went towards the horses. You know, not thinking too much about what we're doing, just being in the moment. I'm glad I'm hearing that. It's not that bad. That's not that bad. So, in order for us to let it go, mm. we have to go through it. Okay. Right? Yeah. So one thing that you need that we need to understand, not to pay attention to that. Yeah. Right? Not to let that take over our love. Yeah. yeah. Right? And all this whining, stuff. all this movement, yeah. all of that. Yeah. Let's see it as not necessarily aggression. It's an expression of saying, how can I help yeah. those horses, right? Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it on this side, come over here, because this this creates a nice wall between right. him and, and the horses. And the horses don't feel, there you go, that he, this guy, is, is out of control. The horse is controlled by the rider. Yeah. So yeah. they're one. Yeah. So yeah. the only one who's not one yet is the it's dog. Him. Yeah. But the human yeah. is, is calm. So now I am being part of that pack. Right, OK, yeah, yeah. See how we create a triangle? Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, because his mind has, has a I'm just going to relax, Sally. Right, right? I was expecting him to do something in anger, but then when I looked at him, he wasn't angry. And I, it's so alien, because everyone gets angry with Herbie. Everybody, um, except Caesar. <laughs> Shh, hey. Shh. Right there. Now we're going to let him wait right there. Right, so because he passed, yeah. right, without going into that state, yeah, yeah. right, and yeah. so, shh, hey, shh, shh, there you go, lay back, lay back state, and so in the beginning he can lay back and ignore, right, avoid, yeah, right, that's the meaning. There's yeah. no tension on the leash. No, everybody loves you, <laughs> right, shh. See, because he's still like ready to, yeah. to, uh, to pounce, yeah. so I'm just gonna push him a little bit to the side so he can get into more, there you go, more relaxed stage. Shh, shh. So by us changing body language, we're also changing state of mind. Okay. Dogs, 
When they relax and they lay down on the side, they go in their bellies. My goal, it was not so much about making him surrender as much as about making him relax. It's just the body language is the same. Relax, relax. And then that's when he put his feet that way. I said, okay, let me show you, Sally, how you push the elbow this way, and that creates stretching. So if he starts stretching, then he starts relaxing. But that's not, that's not stretching. Right. He's giving us a certain amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. So, there we go. How long did, do you know how long did he give us? About five minutes? At least five, yeah. All right. So that means we have to remove away from the horses at four minutes in the beginning. So that's something to know. Okay, how long can he take doing it on his own? You see, this is when I'd give up, you see, because I'd think that's it. No, this, is, gone this back. is when you get to know more about it. <laughs> yeah. Now, Caesar introduces food to give Herbie a more positive association with the horses. So now you can pass by with the food, so you can redirect. Now we're going to start right here. So the brown one is more relaxed. Is it, can, can I come a little closer? Okay. Okay. There you go. Right here. There you go. So now we're getting closer to the proximities. And so this way the horse doesn't feel the intensity of the eye contact because yeah. that's prey. This is predator. Yeah. So the best thing a predator can do is give the back. Yeah. Come on. Oh, over here. Right here, so. Relax leash. Yeah. Relax leash. And again, he's using his nose more and more. That's, that's, that's much better. There we go. See, that's better right there. So again, what we're checking, how long can he wait? Yeah. And, and then we're increasing the time. Yeah. Before we remove him so he can relax and then bring yeah. him back. Yeah. No. No. That's right. She didn't know that I was going to pass the leash to her. You know, it was her turn. But it's not real until she do it. So you just focus on, on walking. That's all. I'm correcting him for you. OK. So you just focus on the beautiful experience of freedom. So I'm focusing on just creating calmness in you. Yeah. And then you bring the assertiveness. OK. OK, turn around. There you go. And then I'm going to be right here with you in the middle. There you go. Because this is a new memory, a new file for you. Yeah. Stop right here. There you go. There you go. Shoulders up. Hit up. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's a very proud oh. moment. That's a successful moment. Mm. That's a moment to cheer. Yeah. Wish you have a Guinness right now. <laughs> and fish and chips. Chips. Yeah, fish and chips. Chips. No, chips. But well, that's the Mexican way. I have to have an accent. Oh. <laughs> when Caesar asked me to think of a moment I felt proud of myself, I th thought about me and Dan getting married. You know, that, that was the most fantastic thing, you know. Our relationship survived and we got married and had okay. many happy years together. Sit. If we express anger to the world, we can only receive that back. So I wanted her to see that you're creating this. Nobody was against her. <laughs> All those people were helping. You know, the horses came to help. We were two feet away from the horse at one point. Everybody was eager to help. They just didn't know how. 10 days later, Sally loads up Herbie and his pack mate Taz to head back to Wimbledon Common. This time, Caesar will focus on Herbie's behavior around other dogs. Herbie's been quite good for him. I mean, I've really been on his case. I haven't tried him around horses, but he's been much better around other dogs when I'm on my own. But when I walk with a friend, he's awful. Good to see you. And you? Good, good. Let me see. Let me see your, your dedication. <laughs> Should this I get is a different car, same, same car? No. no, a different one. Yeah. And this well, is a he dog. acts better in this car. Do you think? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he is quite calm now, yeah. yeah. I suppose because this has got less windows for him to 
right. you know, look out. You know, because the view creates this excitement. So yeah. obviously the, it's the sight for him. Sometimes yeah. for dogs it's the sound. Yeah. But in this case, because this is a different car, I never experienced him before. Yeah. Much more calmer. Yeah, See he how is. his nose is, is, is more engaged? Yeah. So if, if you can use this car more often to bring him here. Oh, I, I do, you, yeah. You can yeah. totally alleviate and, and, uh, and allow the rehabilitation better. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of stuff with other dogs, which has been working quite well. All right, let's see um, it. But he hasn't met his enemies that are over there. Well, yeah. let's not think about enemies. Let's just think about, you know, challenge. OK. You know, you have challenge, not enemies. <laughs> to me, it was more important that Herbie Wait. show Sally that he doesn't want to hurt a dog. It's just he has no choice. She keeps thinking all these thoughts about that's the enemy. <laughs> Oh, he doesn't like fluffy dogs. Uh, he's going to kill them. And all these negative thoughts that only exist in her mind. And so you don't act until he reacts the wrong way, you know? But okay. the most important part is how we react to the situation to start paying attention to how it feels. OK, so German Shepherd just passed yep. by. How do I felt about that? Was What was my internal conversation? You yeah, wanna... I'm used to sort of fighting with him, you know, to, to get his attention. No, you're used to fight with you. Yeah. And no, you're not fighting with him. He doesn't want to fight with you. He doesn't want to argue. He doesn't want chaos. No animal wants chaos. None yeah. of them. None of them. So I can get right there. Right there. He's going to do that. That's, that's the yeah. Hey. Is that your friend? Yeah, that Collie. That's his cross. friend? Yeah, he really hates that dog. Yeah, but you got to stop saying that he hates him. <laughs> no, I don't know how, you know. It's well, it's not that I he got... hates him, you know, it's not that he hates him, but he just don't know how to relay with him. People who are in war, until they get into the same intimate space and they get to know each other, they will never change their mind about each other. When you have two negative minds and you put them in the same space, it becomes a peaceful mind. It's just he, he has never had the chance to meet, what's his name? Patch. Patch. All right, perfect name. So that's what I say, they don't hate each other. You know, that's a concept that human creates in the mind because he does not exist in the animal world. Look at the state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See the state? Yeah, I do. Very see. calm, very in peace with himself. And Taz is doing his own thing. He's a yeah. role model. Yeah. Role model. We have two role models yeah. helping one dog, right? Mm -hmm. Don't think. Go. Give a little bit more leash to, to uh, there you go. Breed, breed and don't look at the ground. Beautiful. She needs to trust, you know, trust that she can do it. Turn around. So I was talking to Sally's friend at one point and showing him, what do I see? You know, how can he help? He, he was already helping just by volunteering his dog and himself. I told Sally, Sally, don't come by yourself. Bring somebody with you, bring support. You need a human with you. Did anybody take a picture of this so she can have it in her refrigerator? Because <laughs> you gotta wake up to this picture every day. Yeah, I do. Every, every single day. She needs to see that she can actually tell people, can you please help me? Feel it. Yeah. It's about a feeling, not so much about a concept or, you know, heel or next to you, left or right or mm -hmm. whatever. No, it's just the feeling more important. They adjust. I mean, when you start walking, he just went right yeah, there. You had yeah. a beautiful pack. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> pack. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I realize it's not got that much to do with Herbie. It's about how I see myself and what I need to work on. And I need to work on um, being positive, yeah. believing in myself, not saying I'm going to try and do something, say I am going to do it. Don't be so hard yeah. on yourself. Yeah. Try not to. No, <laughs> stop that word. OK. No hate, yeah. no try. Yeah. No yeah. enemies. It's already too many. Cool? Yeah. England? <laughs> Thank you. Harriet and I are extremely close. Just by chance, we happen to love living in the same area. We spend a lot of time together because we live literally around the corner from one another. We talk every day, several times a day. Hello. My sister and I are both actresses, and there was a very difficult time for our parents because we were both on two separate channels. I was on Absolutely Fabulous on BBC, and my sister was on The Desmonds on ITV, and they didn't know which channel to watch. And so it was a little bitterness there, obviously, between us. Thank you.
believe the sisters also share a passion for their pets. Wait. When I first met Bruno, he was like a little bear cub. He was absolutely gorgeous and very perky and very sweet, and I fell in love instantly. Bruno had a brother, Diesel. This amazing brown ball of fluff. And once my sister had hers, I thought, well, I have to have one too. It's kind of a sister thing, I guess. And they're the most bright, warm, strong, gentle beasts. What was fantastic for Harriet and me was we had a reason to get together every morning and have a chat and have sister time. We could have a laugh together. The brothers would run off and have uh, games. And it was, again, time for us to chill out and shoot the breeze and do all that stuff that sisters do. About five or six months ago, Bruno and Diesel began to be a little bit more over-playful, overzealous with each other. And suddenly began to be much more aggressive and rough and tumble. They would stand up on their hind legs and growl at each other and run like crazy. And what used to be fun became a kind of combat. The noise and the, uh, the sort of building aggression is extremely worrying. Certainly, it frightens other people around. Hey, hey, hey. They're big dogs, and we're screaming at them because we're trying to calm them down. Hey, hey, hey. Come here. And it's very frightening. No, wait. We barely get time to speak. We're trying to corral our dogs. It's become a sort of stressful and anxious making time, taking away any kind of joy and pleasure we had. Diesel. It's really distorted what was a fantastic time. And so now we are stuck in our own houses, going on our separate walks in the morning. And we even make a point of avoiding each other now because we're too frightened. It's got that difficult that we can't actually even meet in the street. I long for Harriet and I to be able to walk together again and have our talks and our time together. I hope Caesar can give us back our lovely walks together, because we really miss them. We don't understand what's going on. They're quite aggressive. They growl. It has escalated over the last few months. When they're little, we encourage them, you know, they never caught them, but they chase squirrels or they chase something. And, and so we do, oh, look, and we encourage them, mm, yeah. don't we, to go and play. Yeah. But something feels more out of control. And what's odd is they don't do it in the house at all. Mm. They both live with cats. They're very passive mm. in the home and obedient. Mm -hmm. But outside, it's a different story. It's actually real instincts. You nurture instincts in the beginning because you thought it was funny chasing the squirrel. Mm. So instincts kick in and you have no control over right. them. Right. And they dominate that way. So when you are in the woods and the dog is in front of you, you are telling them to control the scenario. And that's exactly what they do. They it's get exactly. ahead of us and they're, yeah. they're gone. Okay. They see it as somebody have to protect the ladies. And it's going to be us because we're in front of the pack. And, and I've tried to make him walk next to me. Mm. But he's so big. Yeah, and you're using tension. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> no, probably. That's what you did. <laughs> look, if I hold a leash, look how I hold a leash. I know. I feel like I've got to beef up. Yeah, yeah. Come on, do it. Yeah. And he, Let's go get tense. And I, and, I try and, hold, <laughs> yeah, and I try and hold the lead really high, yeah. but he's, I feel he's so big. You don't want to control your body. I mean, look, I'm a very small Mexican man. Uh, I don't need the whole body. It's the mind that controls the okay. relationship. Yeah, but the beauty of dog is forgiveness. It doesn't matter for how long you have made mistakes. They're ready to forgive you and move on. <laughs> so what I want to do is how you prepare yourself for the walk outside. Sure, sure, you know, sure. Whatever. Caesar's opening scene starts with Harriet and Diesel, while Matilda waits in the wings with Bruno back at her house. We're just going to observe that stuff. This is a beautiful sign behind me. It says, keep calm and carry on. That's calm and assertive to me. OK, come on. Come here, sit down. Sit, sit. Diesel, come in. Sit. OK. Observation. Mm. What you have is an excited dog. 
Yeah. Mild excitement. Yeah. And then you go into, come here. This sit, sit, sit. He's a very calm nature guy here. So you don't even need sound. You can just do body language. Okay. Because you want to keep the calm. Yeah. Keep calm and carry on. Okay. <laughs> There's no need for the sound. That's yeah. amazing. That yeah. was amazing. <laughs> yeah. So then from here, we move to your sister's house. OK. And every pack is going to be one that triggers a behavior. Already, I feel him pulling. Yeah, he's pulling. Yes. Let me see the, the umbrella. My goal was to see who is the one who has this intensity. The, the uh, umbrella is my leg. Yeah. There is one of them yeah. who's triggering. He's the one who's saying, let's behave this way. Let's keep our tail high. Let's patrol the area. So this is it? This yeah. is it. See how he's coming? Mm -hmm. So the same thing. This is your door. He is not pulling towards. No. So it's not that we hold him too tight, you know? Short, but not tense. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Such a relief. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Just move more assertively. Yeah. There you go. Showtime. So we already did one long hair German Shepherd. Now we're going to do Bruno. I got a hench that Bruno is the one <laughs> triggering the whole charging behavior. Come on, let's go see. As soon as I open the door, Bruno welcomed me with a strong eye contact. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, definitely. Bruno just wanted to knock me out of the way, so I right away told him, you can't do that. Definitely more excited yeah. than Diesel. And then that's when I said, ha ha, you're the one. And you can see how the door is all scratched out by Bruno. Then you can go to Diesel's house and see his door. No scratches. Bruno's eye contact is so alert. Yeah, he is. If you take a picture of Diesel, you take a picture of Bruno, you will see. Now what we're going to do, you're going to put the leash in. Yeah. Bruno. Bruno. Come on. Good boy. Come here, sit. Sit. Same thing your sister did. Yeah, the same boy too. Yeah. Harriet and Matilda both did the same thing. Sit, sit, sit. Come here. Let's go. You don't really need so much sound. Yeah, I think that's good. Wait. OK. He was already in front mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. So what I would do, is to ask him to move back. Well, I'm gonna, there you go. Just guide him before I open door. Right. That way I can control without the tension, see? So I use my leg, which is the same thing I did with the sister. He have, there you yeah. go. He have to, he have to make them move back. So I'm just gonna walk him a little bit for you so okay. I can get him in the zone okay. and you see it. Yeah. He's going through the process. What is it that you want? Yeah. And what I want is just for him to slow down. That's all. So Round about here would be where he would really. Yeah. Really. And so, see, because we slow him down all the way from the beginning, then we can come here and show and show him this side. Hi. Yeah. Beautiful. Very see good. the eye contact? It's a different eye contact. Yeah, it is. I think he feels he's driving it a bit. Right. Well, but it's because you told him to get excited. Yeah, I did. Both of you it's begin the, same the thing. whole conversation with like, sit, sit, sit. <laughs> both of you. Let's go. And both of you do the same thing. Yeah. It's in the genes. It is, must be. You know? So they're still relating. So it's a still relationship. It's a calm relationship. Yeah. We should right. go to the forest now. OK. With Diesel leading the way, the pack sets off for the park, where Caesar lets him off leash. Can I have borrow your leash, man? And then, using several leashes, fashions a longer lead for the more aggressive Bruno. I'm not going to pull back. It's just to the side. There. Right. Relax. Not yet. See how he's yeah, so still, forward? Yeah. Yeah, here. It's me that I tell him, let's go. Yeah. There you go. Then it was time to do how to behave in the woods. We didn't just went to the woods. We went to a place that has been since 4,000 BC. A very special place. There's a lot of scent passed by there. There's a lot of energy passed by there. It has this special magic, you know, because it's the concentration of, of, of life that passed by there. There we go. So as you see, he's experiencing the park same way. 
-hmm. but we are just helping him so he can slow down. Yeah. He's doing really good, so that's why I'm gonna take the leash. But I'm, I don't want him, as soon as he feels the leash is soft, he can take that's off. That's what he usually does. Like yeah, a racing yeah. horse. Exactly. You know? So, shh. So let's move on. There you go. So, see that tail? Yeah. Look at his conversation. Look at the tail up. And that, shh, hey! Bruno is not ready to be off the leash because he's coming with this demeanor. He's going to control the environment. Yeah. yeah, you don't have aggression. It's just his dominant way of being that can get him in trouble and people get scared. Yeah. See, I'm not worried about this guy. No. This is the guy who's sending the, the charging signals. <laughs> it is. There you go. Hey. I'm just making sure he understands that it's codes to practice in the woods. What I suggest is keep him on the leash for a certain amount of time. Once you're ready to let him go off the leash, make sure you understand how long he's going to be off the leash. So he knows there's a limit. The leash is definitely going to give you more access to structure. Then you reward him following. So this becomes affection. Yes. This is what he's working for. Right. Hey. Until they inherit, we're open and grateful about the experience. And then you, you make your own. Whatever I was saying, they were absorbing it, and it was easy for them to see it. Just saying, you I'm telling you when you're going to do it. Yeah, it's parenting. <laughs> yeah. It's, the difference tomorrow will make is that we can begin to start going on our walks again together. And having shared this extraordinary time with Caesar, it just gives us the confidence to go on, I think. I think tomorrow we can walk the dogs together. Mm -hmm. That's what we wanted. <laughs>
you have to also focus on the small things that seem not to bother you as much, but it bothers him because you get into that state as well. Hmm. Next, it's showtime for Nick and Patty. Just go. Come on, this way. Come on. Let's go for a ride. Like a boy. Verbal is excitement. Come on, let's go, come on, let's go. Sit, no, stay right here, no, come on. So it's a very excited expression. Come on. He feels trapped. Is that what it is? Yeah. Patty, when we did the exercise of the car, he Just came go. from an excited state, then he became unsure because he said, look, I'm not sure. And then you just went and scooped me out of the floor and put me in the car. So in the beginning, take the time. Mr. Nick and Cindy were not paying attention to the conversation of Patty because they were just focusing on putting the dog in the car. Good boy, good boy. That's a memory, that's all. But what I'm doing is I'm asking him to face this instead of me, instead of him facing that way. When a dog is giving you his back and is not facing where you're gonna put him, he's telling you I'm not sure. Can we have uh, just food? At one point we use food, we use the scent. What was very important for Patty is that he participate in getting in the car because he became unsure of the car, so that way we create self-esteem and say, well, you did it too. I want him to help himself, you know, to feel more comfortable about going up here. Good boy. It's a moment where you need to be a paramedic, you know, where you understand to be calm and you understand the meaning of being confident. That's what you want to imprint in your dog, that he feels confident with you. That way you gain the trust back. The growl that Patty was making, it was an insecure growl. Very gentle. Then we go here. So this is this is part. So I'm, I'm doing it step by step. There you go. Every time he he calm down, we get the door closer and closer and closer. Because when I close the door slowly, he gets really worked up. If mm -hmm. I close it quickly, it's over quick. I know. But this this way is how we're gonna help him. The other right. way is like saying good boy mm. to the growl. Oh. Caesar's patience is what really fascinates me, and he'll take as much time as it needs for the dog to calm down. And in fact. Just by waiting an extra 15 seconds, you can hear the noise in the dog's throat calm down. Come on. Just do it without the sound. Something we learned today. Communication is much more than just speaking. There's a whole lot of energy and body language. Good boy. And he stays right here. See the difference? Now, now you're asking him to slow down so he can go to this door, so he can go to another door. Yeah. So you're breaking it down for him. OK, so now we move that way. Come on, Paddy. Beautiful. Yeah. Came out of the house after us, not in front. And uh, then by the time he, we got to the car, he was calm and waiting for us to yeah. take the lead. That's beautiful. Good boy. At one point, Mr. Nick grabbed Patty really close to his face. That's dangerous because the dog feels trapped. And so he can panic and react the wrong way. He wasn't going to let me get hurt. And I felt that he was aware of the whole situation very very, very intensely. And he's calming down. Yeah, he's totally calming down. Let's do the door now. Beautiful. <laughs> right there, right there. Right there. Patience was an important one of our lessons today. OK, close it. Well, I'll be delighted if I can get this to stick every time. He will be delighted, too. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> it's very important for me that I leave them with choices. We're building a ramp for Patty. Pass me a tape. The way 
I show them, you know, with the leash, this is what you can do. This is how you can ease this, the situation, which Patty find it fascinating and, you know, brilliant, as they say here in England. So, it, so this way, you can put a leash all the way from the kitchen, so you already bring him engaged. Yes. Patty was actually doing a part of the job, right, so and that was making him happy. You. Yeah. Yeah. It was terrific to meet the man. He really does do what it says on the box. He fixes, as he says, he fixes people. He doesn't fix dogs. He helped us to learn about how to communicate better. OK, let's go, let's go. Go on, go on. Go on. Ah, good boy. He runs up there now. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> I think the most important thing I learned really is to stay calm and have the good energy here we go, pets. He doesn't want to growl to his owners. He was just growling because his owners were putting him in there insecure, and then he felt trapped. Yes. Very good. We should celebrate. Let's yes. go and have a pint at the Let's pub. Let's go to the pub. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>Great job, Harriet and Matilda. I knew you could perform the roles of calm, assertive pack leaders. Greetings from across the pond. You've got good news for you. We've worked hard with Paddy and lots of good progress. He's a relaxed dog and good at getting into the car now. We use a lead and that seems to help a lot. And we've got a new addition to the family. Well, we're a happy family and thank you very much indeed, Caesar, for everything you've done for us. Yes, thanks, Caesar. We had a great day. You really helped us a lot. Cheers. Throughout the world, dogs understand the common language of calm assertive energy. Empower yourself with that energy and enjoy the relationship you always dreamt of having with your dog. I am the dog whisperer.